Lord have mercy, tell me you weren't trying to hold back those tears when it was all said and done. Till the End of the Moon was truly a remarkable story, and the journey was just an amazing experience. But does it hold a candle to the very best Shansha dramas? In the last video, I introduced you to my tier system. In the B tier, we have Love Between Fairy and Devil, 10 Miles of Peach Blossom, and Sword Snow Stride. While we have an A tier, we have The Untamed, Love and Destiny, and Word of Honor. And in the S tier, which is very close to my heart, Evernight. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the ending of Till the End of the Moon and find out what my final verdict is. With the fate of the three realms hanging in the balance, Tantai Jin, who is now also Chen Jimin, must merge himself with the Devil God. By becoming the Devil God, he overcomes the temptations of the old Devil God and succeeds to have total control of the powers. This just means that he's a good Devil God and not the bad Devil God, to put it simply. If you know what I mean. His final attempt to save the world was simple. Fool everyone to believe that he is the real Devil God and have Lisu Su ascend to become a god herself. Only a god can kill a god. In the final moments of the drama, Jiwoo loses himself and is consumed by greed and revenge, deciding to use a forbidden spell to gain demonic powers, with the hopes to defeat Dante Jin himself. He assembles all the sects to set up an array that would kill the Devil God. This final fight sequence between himself and Dante Jin was truly epic. Of course, this was all part of Dante Jin's plan. The only way for Lee Susu to become a god is to have her face the punishment of the array. While he defeats Jiwoo and saving him from becoming demonic in the process, Lee Susu witnesses the god slaying crossbow has been activated by Dentai Jin. At this very moment, Lee Susu experiences godhood and is visited by her mother along with the other gods of the past. She is reborn into the phoenix god just like her mother. What happens next is truly amazing. If you remember from the very beginning, her mother can stop or slow time. Don't worry about the details of this power, because it doesn't matter. She stops time, preventing the god slaying crossbow to kill everyone. She then takes Dentai Jin in a timeless space where they spend their last moments together. It's a heartbreaking moment as the two share their last words and a final kiss. At this very moment though, Susu decides to die with Tentai Jin. But hold your horses because Tentai Jin has one more trick up his sleeve. He uses the heart guarding scale to save Susu from that fate. The world is saved and who the hell is this guy anyway? 500 years later, we see Susu with their daughter spending time in the mortal realm and it's safe to assume that Tentai Jin's divine essence resides within the heart guarding scale for all of eternity. They all live happily ever after in some sort of way. All right, so once you get past all of the puzzle piecing of these episodes that seemingly was cut throughout many more episodes that they meant this to be, this was probably going to be about 60 episodes, but because of the new role in China, things had to be cut down to 40 episodes. And you probably found yourself watching these episodes and like, when the hell did this happen? And things just happen. And you had to kind of put the pieces together by yourself. But it was an amazing story once you figured it out. I would have to put this up there in terms of the story time because at the end of the day, you were very invested into the story. The story was so fantastically told, even though you had to kind of, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just put some of those pieces together. It's different from the standard story of the three worlds, three lives story that you usually get. In this instance, we had, of course, there's three realms, but then we had different characters from the past, from the present, and from the future diverge and connection to each other. That in itself is already something different and something very refreshing to experience when it comes to high fantasy dramas. And it's really hard for you to predict because it's not your standard three worlds, three lives type of story. But in this case, it was done much differently where there was like some sort of time travel that was involved in there in some sort of dream state where you experience what these characters went through uh, way back into the past. And that to me is already a really amazing way to kind of tell this type of story. And the music was really, really one of the best that I've heard in a while. It was epic, it was emotional, and it kept the story going forward in a really purposeful way. And I really loved it and I felt every beat of it. The visual effects, although some of the animals were kind of uh, a little bit, uh, you know, not really, uh, not really amazing, but like the visual effects for the most part when the action sequences really culminated was fantastic. And the actors, especially Liu Yunxi and Bai Lu, really carried the show. I mean, Luo Yunxi like pretty much played four different characters. He played Mingye, Tentai Jin, Chen Jumin, and the Devil God. And the nuances in his acting ability has really made me a fan of. This is like my first time watching him, and I'm looking forward to all of the dramas that he's gonna be coming up with. Bai Lu is always sensational and beautiful, and she played three characters in this one too, and she was fantastic. And I loved every second that they interacted with. Their chemistry was amazing. As far as secondary characters, that was pretty good too. Not the best, but Pian Ren really stood out to me because it was a character I was very invested in, and it's just too bad that you didn't see her in the final acts of the story. 
story. And of course, you have to have a really good villain, apart from the Devil God being a villain who is kind of pretty much out of sight, out of mind. Ye Bin Chang was one of the best villains because it made you hate her really, really bad. It made you want to come across the screen, grab her, and just shake her up and just beat her because her villain was someone that you really wanted to hate and you felt it throughout this story. So big props to the villain there and big props to the actress. Now because of the 40 episodes, this is probably about 60 as I said before, you had to deal with the story jumping forward from time to time and it really kind of surprised you because you were like, from one episode to the next, you were like, when did this happen? And I was like, okay, okay, okay that's uh, I guess that's what happened. With all that said though, with all of the episodes that they had to cut to meet the 40 episode quota, I would have to give Till the End of the Moon an A or an A+. I'm still not ready to put this in the S tier, but it's it's hovering there, guys. Like, this is one of the best Chancha dramas I have ever seen. I'm not ready to put this in the S tier yet, like with Evernight. And Till the End of the Moon is probably one of the best that I've seen to date. It's just amazing. If it's not one of the best, I, I would say probably the best Chancha drama in 2023. This might be reaching it, but I'm putting it in the A in the A plus category. But you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. What is your final grade for Till the End of the moon with all that said thank you so much for stopping by leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't already and tap that bell so you know when we post new videos and if you like asian dramas and k-pop reactions just like me consider subscribing and support the channel once again guys you have a great and amazing day we'll see you next time